Hi everybody, welcome back to D-Town TV, the weekly show for Nikon shooters. My name is Matt Kleskowski. I'm Scott Kelby and welcome to our third show. Now, last week we got such great feedback from you guys. Lots of ideas of things that we needed to show you yep. and here's one of them. A lot of questions about color space. Where do I set the color space on my camera? When do I need to set the color space? Which one do I choose? Matt's got the tip for you. Absolutely, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'll preface this by saying, I'm gonna show you first what to do if you're shooting JPEG, and then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about what to do if you're shooting RAW. So if you're shooting JPEG, what we're gonna do here is press the menu button, and you're gonna go over to your shooting menu and scroll down to color space, okay? Once you get there, just gonna go over and you'll see there's two options. There is sRGB and there's Adobe RGB. So the question is, is which one do you use? Well, the first thing is if you're sending your photos to a lab, the best thing to do is ask them, okay? If you're using you know, a lot of the large labs out there, they're gonna ask you for sRGB, but really the best thing you can do is just give them a call, go onto their website and ask them which one they prefer. If you're a photographer that's printing out a lot of their own work, right. you're probably gonna go with Adobe RGB, especially if your software like Photoshop or Capture NX is set to, uh, as a color space, you're setting your software to use Adobe RGB as well. So the files come right out of here, go right into the software, everything's good. Yeah, but there's no conversion. This doesn't say, exactly. hold on, we're gonna convert you from sRGB to Adobe RGB. You're setting it's it in already, the camera. Yeah. Okay, so now the next thing is, so that's if you're shooting JPEG. If you're shooting RAW, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. If you're shooting raw, you make this conversion in whatever program you're using to process your raw photos. So if it's Capture NX, you make the conversion, you make the decision at the time when you're working on the photo, what do you want to save this as? sRGB or Adobe RGB? Using Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever it is, you make that decision at that point. So it doesn't matter what you do in the camera if you're shooting raw. Well, there you go. Pretty simple stuff. Hey, uh, I'm gonna take you over to the photo studio for my tip. My tip is for people who are shooting on a tripod. It's a great little feature that makes shooting on a tripod and making your adjustments a lot, lot easier. Let's go check it out. Hi, have you ever been in the studio or out shooting a landscape and you've done this, looking at your settings on the top of the camera? Well, I'm gonna tell you about a feature that's already on your camera. You probably already know it's there too, but I wanna give you a couple of tips for making the most of it. The feature is called the shooting information display. And what it does is on the back of the camera, you have a little info button and it brings up the shooting information. It literally shows your aperture and your shutter speed and your ISO and all the information that you would normally set in your camera. But the advantage of course is, is that it's really, really big. But the advantage is especially important in two situations. Number one, when you're shooting on a tripod, all right? That keeps you from having to look over the top and that. And number two, when you're shooting at night. But this is not just a readout, it's live. So when you make changes on the camera, if you were to go ahead and change something, it actually updates live. Now, there's also a little button. If you press the info button again, now you can make more changes and you can scroll over to different things using the little center selector button here, the selector wheel, there you go, and actually make other changes in the camera as well just by pressing that button again. Now, there's another feature you can turn on on the D90 and on the D700 that will let you activate this without having to touch the button. If you go to your menus, why did I turn it away? <laughs> if we go to our menus and you go to the custom settings menu, so go to the custom settings menu and then go down over here to controls. And in controls, the very first one is called the lamp switch. If you go over to that, it's gonna be by default set to just turn on the backlight for the LCD that appears on the top of your camera you can switch it to what's called both. And now here's what changes. Now, when you switch the little button on your shutter release, if you switch it to the far right, so there's off, on, and then if you push it to the far right, not only will it illuminate the top LCD, but now it illuminates your shooting information display as well. So there's just a couple of tips on how to make the most of a feature that you probably already know is there, but remember, next time you're shooting at night or shooting on a tripod, that's how to make the most of it. Hi, I'm Joe McNally. I'm teaching a series of classes on location lighting for Kelby training. What I'll talk about right now is, uh, is a, a specific class called Light Shaping Tools. We're going to 
change the light. We're going to move from point A to point B to point C to point D and on, you know, going forward. We're going to take a look at what light does for us. Always remember, light is the language of photography. It's how we speak, and we have to know how to speak eloquently, especially when our subject matter is another human being. All right, folks, well, welcome back. Now, one of my favorite accessories is a battery grip. It's something that I cannot live without on my camera. And a lot of people think th the big draw to a battery grip is an extra battery inside, so you get extended battery life. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing. Extended battery life is good, but that's not why I use a battery no, grip. Not at all. So uh, I have a D200 here with the MBD200 battery grip. And uh, right there is a, a, a D300. Right, it's got the MBD10 battery grip on it. Works on the D300 or the D700. So you got a battery grip for pretty much every camera. The way it works is very simple. It attaches to the bottom of your camera. And once you attach it, um, obviously you get an extra battery inside of there. So you do get extended battery life. But really one of my favorite parts about this is that first off, it gives me the feeling of a bigger camera. Okay, so I, I, for me, I feel like I get more support and more stability with it because yeah. it, it makes the camera fairly larger than it was before. Yes, and it looks like a more expensive camera. <laughs> it looks like a D3 or D3X because it's big and hefty. Yeah, so that's big cool thing number one. The other really cool thing about it is, you know this when you're shooting, yeah, this is the, the main one. So you're shooting, you're shooting landscape and your shutter's right here. Well, when you kind of turn over, you know how you're always wrapping your hands around to, to get to the shutter? With the battery grip, you've got a shutter release right on the top right of the camera. So now you hold the camera just the way you would if you were shooting in landscape, but when you switch over to portrait, you can still do the shutter release on the top of the camera. And you've got the control dials are back there too. So you still, you haven't lost your control because it would stink if you were shooting this way and then you had to reach over here to, to set your aperture. It's got a dial for you right up, right in the back, right where your thumb sits and right up front. So they're, it's perfect. Yeah. And, and all the tips that we show you that deal with the control dial on the, the top of the camera, they apply to this control dial as well. So whatever you change there automatically changes here. Okay, so a couple things about the battery grip. Uh, you've got the MBD10, and that's going to run you about 269. Uh, you've got the, and that works for the D300 and 700. You've got the MBD80, and that is for the D90 or the D80, and that's about 159. And then finally, uh, for the D40, D60, you've got, uh, Nikon doesn't make it, but a company Ansman makes it, and that's going to run you about 90 bucks. So. If once you've tried one, like Matt says, you'll always want to have one. It's, I've never met anyone that bought a battery grip that didn't say later, I love this thing. It <laughs> yeah, really is great. Absolutely. Hey, I'm going to wrap things up with a tip on the D90. I'm actually going to give you two tips, one for shooting video on the D90 and one for not shooting video on the D90. So last week's show, we talked a little bit about setting your camera on like a D300 to D700 to D3 to where the center button in the back of the camera would zoom you mm -hmm. in. Well, on the D90, that feature doesn't exist but there is a very little handy one that you might want to know. So let's say that we're in playback mode, we're looking at photos on the back of the camera. Well, if you want to zoom in, you'll just use the little zoom button here. So we zoom in tight like this. If you want to get back quickly to the regular view, the fit in window mm -hmm. view, all you do is press that little okay button right in the middle and it gets you back. Yeah. So last week we learned that you can set that up to where it'll zoom in and zoom out on one button. On the D90, you're just going to be able to zoom out, but at least you can zoom out. Yeah. Okay, but that's not my really cool tip. The next one I think this is great. Neat. Okay, so one of the coolest things about the D90 is that it shoots high definition video. But one of the problems that you're gonna have with just because of the, the auto exposure is that when you're shooting video and you just switch it into live view here and you're shooting video, when you're shooting video, as you move across a, a, a room or a, a, any kind of uh, area, you'll see the exposure automatically change, right? As it's happening. So you'll see the kind of room glow and then back and glow yeah. and then back. So you're gonna get a very uneven look with your video. You can change that. There's a little setting in the back of the camera that you can do that with. First we go to the menu button. We're gonna to go to controls. And we're gonna go all the way down to the assign, auto exposure lock and auto focus lock button. Click on that. And on the back of it, we're going to scroll down here to AE lock, and then in, in the parentheses it says hold. All right, go ahead and turn that on. So what you're going to, what that, what you're telling the camera then is, when I'm shooting video and I'm set to live view mode, when I'm shooting video, I'm going to press this little button right here in the back of the camera. 
and it's gonna lock the exposure wherever I click it. So I'm like looking at my video and I hold the exposure lock on that spot right there. And now as I move, nothing changes, nothing moves in not and out. It's not pulsating It's not pulsating or anything like yeah. that. My exposure remains constant the whole time. Very, very cool little trick. Makes a big difference when you're shooting video with the D90. Cool. Well, hey folks, that wraps up our third show. We appreciate you guys watching. Now make sure you stop by dtowntv.com. Leave us your feedback and any questions or comments that you have. Also, check out our good friend's site, Moose Peterson. Moose does a blog called moosenewsblog.com, and it's full of incredible pictures. He's a Nikon shooter. He's got beautiful uh, Absolutely. images, but he's also got a lot of great tips on things about cleaning your cameras. He did a beautiful thing about, like, you know, cleaning the sensor and all that kind of stuff. It's a great resource. Go check it out, moosenewsblog.com. Well, folks, thanks again for watching. We appreciate you... Uh checking out our show. My name is Matt Kleskowski. I'm Scott Kelby and we'll see you back here next week. Take care.